Hey guys, it's D.I.D. Choi, doing a quick kind of vlog-ish kind of documenting kind of thing right now. For my seminar and composition class at NYU, this week's assignment is to make a contact sampler instrument, right? I've done some like ESX24 sampling before, but I haven't done contact stuff yet. We got some tips and stuff in the class, and since I have my clarinet, I thought it'd be fun to sample my clarinet, right? Basically, the assignment isn't to make something like a Spitfire library, right? That is way beyond our scope and capabilities. This is my first contact instrument. Actually, I tried sampling my water bottle earlier today and it turned out pretty nicely. So I guess this is like my second contact instrument. A couple tips we got was to just have an instrument that has really long samples, kind of like the Spitfire Evolutions. That way it can sound a lot more realistic with minimal programming. So I decided let's try just doing a couple long tones, recording about 30 seconds of each note. I haven't decided what intervals I'm going to do yet. I think I'm kind of just going to wing it and see what I want. Probably something like thirds or fourths or something like that, depending on what range I am playing on the clarinet. I haven't done any routine practicing in maybe like three or four years now. I only pull this out for recording cues. So it'll be fun to do some long tones after a while. I have my tuner on the laptop screen here and I have Logic on my main screen just behind me right there. And I'm basically just going to be recording 30 second loops and hopefully I can walk you through how I make the instrument sound a lot better later on. So just off screen over here is a closet with some clothes in it so it can hopefully dampen some of the sound. I'm gonna go grab a little towel. Got my robe here. Just gonna stick this on the floor so to minimize some of those reflections. So I'm gonna be kind of doing a couple swells and moving around a bit. I'm very much winging this because I don't really know what to expect. So wish me luck. I hope I can actually hold this for 30 seconds. I haven't tried yet. notes in. I have winded. <laughs> Quite sharp overall, huh? Every time a clarinet gets warmer, it tends to go sharp, which is kind of counterintuitive. You'd expect it to go flatter, but clarinets tend to go sharp as they warm up. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more detail in the throat tones. I'm going to do an open G and maybe like an A so we can kind of get that break and then I'm going to go to a B so that we get that break interval perfectly. Oh, I cut off that note a whole measure early. As it's getting higher, it's quite a bit harder to have the breath support. I'm very much out of shape. I am so out of breath. Long tones on a clarinet. Great practice for people that actually care about their instrument. For me, oh, it's too much effort. <laughs> All right, now let's get into the programming. All right, we're at the computer now. Sync clap is gonna be... That should be an excellent sync clap for me to edit later on in post. Oh, those long tones really got me tired. Anyways, here we are on the screen now. This is our clarinet. Take a listen to that last note. Yeah, all of my attacks are pretty bad because I'm pretty out of shape, like I was saying. So let's just export all of these to a new track. Unpack to new tracks. There we go. Let's do a little bit of cleaning up here. Let's zoom into these waveforms. Don't need all that material once I'm done. You can see I didn't make it to what I was trying to make it to for all of these. Especially those as we got higher, I started to get tired and I also started to just run out of breath more easily. Anyways, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open all these files in Isotope and denoise them. First, let me do a low pass filter, for, or high pass filter first. 
Uh, lowest note on the clarinet was the E, D, which is like, eh, 150 hertz is probably good. Yeah, that cleans it up. Oh yeah, I could have probably could have gone quite a bit higher, but that's okay. And where's my spectral D noise? There in this profile here. Yeah, that's a pretty clean spot. This is the Rode NT1A, so it is pretty noiseless from the get-go. All I'll have to do is really get rid of the crackles and little pops and stuff from my chair. Now let's do a mouth declick. And the spectral repair here. And here. Get rid of all that unnecessary stuff. Like that is me breathing probably. Nice, that sounds good. Now those were those three. Let's do this one as well. And we'll just do the exact same process on all of these samples. Kind of feel like tacos today. I might order some Taco Bell. Feeling pretty lazy to make something. Really, I should be making something to save some money, but uh, yeah, what is all this? Ah, you can hear the kind of lower overtone of my playing. Great. Okay, I should probably try to get rid of that now, huh? Rather than later. Eh, that didn't really do much. Don't want that lower overtone. How do I get rid of it? Like that? Both? Eh, it's not doing much. Anyways, you can see that it's the, the harmonics are quite it's the what, the even number harmonics, the odd harmonics or whatever. You can see that there's quite a bit of space in between where usually we would have an extra harmonic. So, wow, clarinet's pretty cool, huh? I'm fixing the rest here. Okay, good enough. By the way, I set Shift W to take me straight to Isotope RX. You can set that somewhere. Where is that? It should show up here. Usually it's it says open in RX or something like that, but anyways. Shift W again. Okay, so we are all denoised now. Back to logic. I should probably save this session. Uh, let's call it, I'm gonna be so creative and call it clarinet evolutions. Even though I didn't really do much evolution-y stuff, I was just mostly holding the note. So, you know, maybe I might restart and re-record the samples once I get a hang of this, but yeah, this is what I have for now. I'm not even doing any round robins or dynamic layers or anything. It'll be fun. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, just gonna move everything onto the same track now. And I don't need this guide track anymore, which I was using for recording, so I know where to start and stop. Gonna come in here and add in that special sauce, Salomony Melodyne. Because while I was using a tuner, I noticed that I was quite out of tune for a lot of those notes. And, you know, I could have adjusted on the fly, but I felt it might be easier to just hold the note and tune it in post. Although it's here you can see that I am correcting myself. I started sharp and then I went down. Just gonna split that a bit. Select all, pitch center to 100. Let's take the drift down. I do like a little bit of variation in tuning. Now that we have everything rx and Melodyne, let's adjust the start times of these notes too. So I'm gonna go into move, selected to first transient to nearest beat. Now that analyzes the transients and moves this to the first beat. Again, move it to a beat, get it in the vicinity and hit it with that. I'm just gonna go through chop it on that beat and I'll pull it back.
contact sampling and sample developing is quite a time consuming task. It's gonna get rid of these little scraps, I guess they're, they would be called. Okay, get all of these and just drag it back ever so slightly so we have some extra room. That should be pretty safe for all these samples. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to balance each of these tracks. I need to select them. 10 regions as audio files. I've got 10 samples. Great. Don't bypass. All right, all good. Put them in the right folder. Clarinet evolutions. Tune the samples. Bam. Great. So that would have been made. Now I'm just going to import these tuned samples. Put them all on one track. Okay. They were loosely numbered, right? So they should be... Did I record that one twice? No, I guess it's just copies of the same file. Okay, I'm gonna mute that. These are our new samples now. Great, you can see that I was not very good at being consistent dynamically. Great. Just gonna do a slight clip gain adjustment on all of these. Not too heavy. I'm not gonna make them look the same. I'm just gonna, I mean, I am kind of going based on sight, but rather than do making them look perfectly even, I'm just gonna do a loose adjustment. So the reason it's recorded so unevenly is because of the mic position. If I had like a stereo pair of mics or something, one kind of for the top of the instrument, one for the bottom, it would have been a lot more even. But you know, this E for example, I'm closing down all of the holes, which means the sound is coming up from the bell. And you saw that I had the mic somewhere kind of in front of the clarinet. So obviously when it's coming from the bell, it's gonna be quite a bit quieter. For this high C for example, I'm only fingering these back two notes, which means it's going to come out the first hole available, which is here and here, which is a lot closer to where the mic was positioned, which is why it's recorded so much louder, despite me trying to play a consistent dynamic. And that's kind of a misconception of people. They think that the sound comes from here. That's not true. That's only the case for one or two notes. Most of the sounds come actually from the holes in front. So you want to have a certain amount of distance in front to get an even sound. And you should kind of experiment going back and forth with the positions. Anyways, that's enough talking. I'm going to try adding a little bit of reverb to it. Maybe like a nice convolution kind of thing to give it a bit of a sense of a hall space. Let's stereoize it. I'm going to go with my Todd AO preset that I use for sample modeling often to see how that sounds. <laughs> Cool, I like that. I think it might be a little too wide though. You can always make it wider later on, but for now I'm just gonna keep it a little less wide. Just use the waves one with. So that IR kind of mellows out the sound a bit. I think it might be too strong though. That's pretty good. EQ. Again, I'm gonna cut those lows again. Gonna boost the loads a tiny bit just to give a more fat sound. Yeah, I might have played a little bit too pure. You know, I was kind of being safe and just doing the best long tone I could. For a more interesting instrument like the Evolutions where they did like a lot of string variation, it would have been nicer to do more variation. Of course, it's easier for string players to do that because we have more than one of them, first of all, and they don't have limited lung capacity. <laughs> I like the reverb, I like the EQ. I'm gonna add a vocal rider just to even out the levels just a bit more. Uh, again, limit the range to three plus or minus, so we have a total range of six basically. 
yeah, that's a pretty nice setting. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and name these files something more sensible than audio take 1.8. Clarinet longs. This is D3, but I, I like to call it D3, but I think contact calls it D2. So let's call it D2. We don't care about the velocity. We don't have round robins. Yeah, so that's actually all I need. Clarinet longs and the pitch. Perfect, got them named. Now the only thing I'm not really happy about is the way I come in for each of these notes. So what I think I'm gonna do is add a bit of a fade. Let's see. Yeah, I think that sounds a lot more natural overall. Uh, yeah, those notes, you can hear too much of that low undertone. So I'm going to cheat a bit and cut those notes a lot more. And it sounds like a fairly natural clarinet attack, actually. Especially these lower ones where I'm not actually cutting the attack too much. It's just attenuated. And in a concert hall, they would be attenuated a bit more. So I think that is acceptable. Of course, we're not making a professional clarinet library. I keep needing to remind myself this is going to be a more creative kind of evolutions-ish kind of long tone library. All right, I think I'm good. Everything is named properly. So I'm going to go ahead and export these again. Final samples. Just call it that or something for now. So I'm really kind of improvising and learning as I go. I tried it again, like I mentioned, with my water bottle earlier this morning. So I have a rough idea of the order of how I want to do things. But, you know, I'm not a bright programmer, really. I also like, it's not like I don't know anything about the computer. So I think um, it'll be <laughs> an interesting video to follow, right? I'll probably post this result for free on the link in the description, assuming this goes well and this video gets posted at all. I am going to go ahead and bring these final tuned samples in. Bam! Back to full screen here. Okay, I'm gonna go into edit, auto map setup, set as the root key. And then I'm gonna go into edit again, functions, key ranges via root keys. And that gets me kind of in the ballpark for everything. So this is the lowest note. Well, let's zoom in here. Everything's so small. So the key range, D2, you can go up a tone, that's good. G, up and down a tone, that's good. Camera turned off, but yeah, I'm just adjusting these ranges here. I don't want this one to be right there because that's where the break is supposed to be. B flat, written, and there's the first across the break sample. I hit that break pretty well, huh? They don't sound too different. Yes! <laughs> Mm, let's add one more of this note. This note sounds a lot warmer, huh? Let's take it up to there, just for the sake of it. Now it sounds like I have a really nice altissimo register. <laughs> Now that that's all mapped out, let's go and do the looping wave editor. Contact is so tiny. It's the biggest I can go. Okay. Zooming in again. Turn on looping. Good. Zoom into the waveform here. What would be a good spot to loop? Let's see, that's a pretty even spot. Another even spot, maybe around there. Let's crossfade a good, good second long crossfade-ish, loop edit, okay. Oh, that's mighty good. That's like nearly perfect. 
snap to zero crossings. Loop at it again. Yeah, okay. Why does it sound so low? The root is off. That's strange. The root should be there. Yeah, you can't really hear that looping transition. You can kind of hear it, but it's not it's not prominent. It feels just as inconsistent of my playing as any other part. All right, that's good. Let's go to the second one now. I can't believe we have to set one for each of these. Mad respect for sample developers. Forgot to crossfade. So as you can see, this is a very time consuming process. I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm gonna order some Taco Bell. I can see what Christian Henson was talking about. Eh, that's not really working. I remember Christian Henson saying like, he would hold a note down with his left hand and have his lunch with his other hand. And I was like, that's a very strange way of working, but it totally makes sense. Hmm, not too happy with that either. All right, and I am back after ordering some Taco Bell. It's gonna arrive in an hour or so. Ugh, I am so exhausted and hungry right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna be going through and making all these loops work. I'm gonna move it there actually. This is very frustrating. <laughs> That's pretty solid. Good. Next. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll just nudge it a little bit forward. Good. Turn on the loop again. I can live with that too, that's good. All right, all my loops are done. This sounds pretty good, I like it. I'm very impressed, it sounds pretty realistic. Grubhub just sent a coupon. 10 minutes after I ordered food. No, I could have gone 10% off. <sighs> Next time. Okay, what else do I want to be doing here? I mean, it sounded quite nice. Let's add a bit of a attack. Just maybe 20 milliseconds-ish. the release longer. I want like a second release. Maybe that's too much. Reverb, maybe built-in reverb. Let's see how it'll sound. Maybe some hall. Oh, that's nice and warm.
obviously <laughs> articulations aren't working. So nothing fast, but if you're just holding long notes like in a band piece or something, like... Pretty good. Okay, let's add a bit of a um feels quite nice. Okay, I just took a few pictures of my clarinet. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of editing. I had like a blue little box thing in the background with some dirty laundry. Only you and I will know this, those of you watching. Because I'm planning to wash out that background and make it look all natural and a little better. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, I've got Photoshop. I had a nice raw picture with this, so... Blacks can come up a bit. Clarity... A little bit of clarity color mixer this is where we really get into it blues let's make the blues darker hue oranges oh i like that kind of red look okay let's work with this yeah let's make things a little more straight Alright, so right now I am on this website from Clockwork Monkey, which is a tool that lets you do these custom DUIs in a really, really easy way. So I'm just going to upload the little picture I took. Let's make this quite a bit higher. 350 seems good. Alright, what kind of knobs do we have here? Mm, don't like that. Yeah, I basically want a knob for dynamics and a knob for reverb. I don't think I really need anything else apart from that. Let's do some labeling. Of course, I could spend all day going through these fonts. Looks like there's a pretty limited selection. I think I like this narrow font. Yeah, let's do that. Add another label. This is reverb. Anything else I want to do? Let's add another knob for expression. Another label. Brush and Dynamics Reverb. I'm gonna go back to the Photoshop file and add in my name. Just gonna add this in for reference. Changed my mind, ended up just deciding to make my own labels with my own fonts so that everything fits into my aesthetic a little bit better. That should work pretty well. Make sure everything is properly centered though. And I noticed that the format was supposed to be a PNG, smallest file size. I'm going to replace the file with this one. That should work well, theoretically. Okay, I'm going to take the contact script into the script editor. Apply. Didn't really work because I don't think I saved this instrument yet, so let's do that. 
don't know why it's not working, but Taco Bell has arrived, so I'm gonna eat. See you guys in a bit. All right, I just have my Taco Bell. I'm nice and full, fulfilled, re-energized. All right, so I have this super nice GUI going. I'm really happy with it. It looks nice. I mean, there's a bit of a collision there, so graphic designers are probably not happy with it, but I'm a composer, not a graphic designer. As long as it looks decent, I'm happy. So here we are. I copy and pasted the script from that website and managed to set my own scripting here. I set the dynamic slider to the parameter cutoff which is down here. So when I move my mod wheel, it goes between 190-ish to the full not engaged mode. The way I did that is I just right click on that and learn CC automation to CC1. And then on the knob scripting, I basically limited it, limited it from 300,000 to 1 million, is that a million? However many zeros that is. So that's a dynamic knob, worked perfectly. Second was the reverb knob. I again went into the KSP manual and found the thing for uh, reverb send, wet dry level. Set that to the wet dry of the reverb right here. So if I were to move this all the way that way, you can see the wet is now at six. And if I put it all the way down, the wet is back to zero. I'm just gonna put it back to 64-ish or whatever that value is. And lastly, the expression knob controller, I didn't add any additional scripting to it. All I did was assigned it to CC11 so that I can move my slider here and it goes up and down. Meanwhile, in the mod section, I mapped MIDI CC11 to volume. I mapped MIDI CC11 to volume. So it's all working perfectly. There's the expression modulation. You can see that it just tames the tone a little bit, but the cutoff is all I have. So this is like a nice piano-ish, a little softer tone. There we go. So it's all working super nice as a kind of chorale polyphonic patch. The next thing I wanted to do was try adding a legato, a fake legato option. And I found this video by David Hillowitz Music. Awesome guy, he has so many good tutorials. So if you're trying out contact, definitely take a look at his videos. So it looks like I can just add another a scripter tab. How do I name these? Can I name these? Title for the script right there. Main GUI, let's say apply there. KR source, and he says just we need starter. Okay. I'm gonna go to the next tab and find Legato. Which Legato does he use? 205KR. Oh, there's two. I guess it's this one that he used. Okay, copy. Edit, paste, apply. That gives us a bunch. Legato mode, good. Presets, let's try the clarinet. Let's try this one. Okay, so this script is working. I think I might have to just give up on that for now. Set it as off as a default. Save, yes. Load it in again.
that plays very well. I'm very happy with it. Let's turn the legato on again. <laughs> I mean, for my first instrument, I think this is fantastic. I'm very happy with it. Let's just try what the reverb sounds with it's like dry. And with full reverb. So it does get quite a bit louder when they add the reverb. Not advanced enough to know how to reduce the dry at the same time, but it's it's fine. <laughs> this is really exciting. It's my first contact instrument that I've made with a GUI and working knobs and stuff. You know, like I said, I did have a instrument that I made this morning. Let me show you that one too. Used my water bottle. And for that, I was just using the piano book contact template. This is the water bottle in question. Right, it's a very resonant one. It has some water in it right now, but when it's like half or something, oh, even now it sounds good. You know, it has a really nice ring to it, which is what led me to wanting to sample it for ages. And because of this assignment, I gave it a try. Uh, it's not as finessed as the clarinet one, of course. And this one actually has a bunch of round robins and different velocity layers. So it was a very different type of instrument. Mm -hmm. I did melodyne the samples, but they still are a little out of tune. Also, it's because of the performance itself. There's a bit of a warble in the sound. It doesn't stay constant throughout. Let me just add a bit of splosh to it. Maybe some Valhalla Room. Kind of reminds me of a steel drum, a celeste, something in between. It's it's a pretty unique sound. So this one I'm also very happy with, but this clarinet sound. Very happy with it. Hope you enjoyed the adventure of making this contact instrument with me. It was pretty fun. If you're totally new to contact, I'm sure it was pretty informative to just watch me struggle through this. And if you are more experienced in contact, give me some tips. I'm very new to it. This is my first time making an instrument today, you know, both the water bottle and the clarinet, and it's been really fun. I think I might do more of this when I have time. So, so that's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna leave a link to download this instrument down below. Obviously it's not finessed. Feel free to use it and finesse it if you'd like. Send me a copy too so I can take some advantage of that. Even with my kind of poor clarinet playing, I think it sounds pretty nice. So leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This has been Diary Choi and I'll see you in the next one.